Hey there, community. Welcome to season three of the Providence podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. At Godspace, we have all kinds of ways to connect with other people and to grow your spirituality. So be sure to sign up for our newsletter and stay connected with us. Visit godspacecommunity.com and follow us on social media too. Godspace is a ministry of the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky, and you are more than welcome to stay connected with us as well. You can find us at cdpkentucky.org and wherever you find yourself on social media. And now let's get started with our scripture reading and do some reflecting together. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer God's vengeance, for God remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from God? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like themselves? Can they seek pardon for their own sins? If those who are flesh cherish wrath, who will forgive their sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside, remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In this Sunday's readings, what captures my attention is the image of hugging wrath and anger as if they are enraged teddy bears or something. What a vivid image. What does it mean to hug wrath and anger? Sirach says that, quote, the sinner hugs these hateful things tightly. And although I'd like to think this is going to be advice for other people, as a certified sinner, I'm sure it applies to me too. And maybe it will speak to you too. So let's take a closer look. Hugging wrath and anger tightly. I'm sure I do that sometimes. But is it necessarily a bad thing? I mean, there have been times when my anger was justified and it moved me to action, like doing advocacy or joining a protest. Sometimes anger has moved me to risk something new, take initiative, or speak up for myself or someone else. Sometimes anger moves me to confront someone in a healthy way. And that can actually strengthen a relationship. I've had experiences in which holding on to anger was a healthy response to an unhealthy situation. My anger pushed me to be resolute and to make a change. So there are times when it's okay, I think, to clasp anger tightly, times when holding on to it is protective or even empowering. However, that kind of anger is not the same as wrath, and I think that is the kind of anger that Sirach is talking about. A few lines later, he says, Forgive your neighbor's injustice, and when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from God? Could people refuse mercy to another like themselves? Can they seek pardon for their own sins? The prophet is not talking about righteous anger that moves us toward justice. He's talking about the kind of anger that's vengeful, 
and destructive. This kind of anger can do some damage in relationships. When I feel this kind of vicious anger, it's hard to let it go. It kind of burns inside and lashes out at people. It tends to control me rather than motivate me. I suspect that clinging too tightly to it can allow my life, relationships, and spirituality to be infiltrated by resentment or bitterness or even rage. I can see why Sirach calls this kind of anger hateful, because if hugged too tightly for too long, we can turn to hatred. Sirach's instruction to let go of this kind of anger reminds me of last week's gospel when Jesus, also speaking about forgiveness, says, Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So it seems like there's a connection between forgiving ourselves and being forgiven ourselves. This week's gospel also shows that when Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive? And Jesus tells a story about forgiveness and unforgiveness in action. So I can't look for mercy for myself unless I offer it to someone who has wronged me. And wow, I can't look for healing from God if I, quote, nourish anger against someone else. Nourish is an interesting choice of words. Often I find that if I'm angry with someone, the more I think about it, the more I allow the feeling of frustration or annoyance or hurt to wash over me, and then the angrier I am. I feed that anger, nurturing it from something fairly benign into something that infiltrates the whole of me. These days, it seems like there's anger in the stratosphere around us. Some of it is justified anger, like anger against racial injustice or systems that keep people in poverty. And that kind of anger moves people to advocate for change. Some of it is wrath, though, which only nourishes itself into a bigger fire, but doesn't push for common good or social change. And maybe some of the anger wafting around us is a mixture of both. The questions emerging in all of this for me are, which kind of anger am I embracing, nourishing, and putting out into the universe? Once I'm able to name the anger, how is God calling me to respond? It seems important for my own spiritual good to understand what kind of anger is stirring in me and to name it. Maybe it's the kind of anger that comes with a call from God to do something. Or maybe it's the kind of anger that comes from a problem in a relationship, and then I need to forgive or ask for forgiveness or find some kind of resolution. Maybe it's neither of these, and it just comes from a wounded ego or even a feeling of entitlement. Oh. That's hard to work through and a little humbling. Or maybe it's anger that's really an elaborate disguise for fear. And if that's what's happening, then I need to unmask it, recognize it for what it is, and deal with it. Only when I can name anger and gauge its flavor can I know how God is calling me to respond with action, mercy, healing, or forgiveness. So now let's continue, or maybe even deepen our reflection. How are you with anger, your own or someone else's? Can you think of a time when anger was a helpful, healthy response within you? 
What was that like? Where was God in it? Can you think of a time when anger was harmful or hurtful? What happened? How did you respond? And where was God in it? What is God calling you to do with any anger that you may be nourishing now? Maybe just spend a little time with God and see what God has to say to you. Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to stay connected with God's space and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky. As you continue on your faith journey, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you, and may we all take good care of each other. Peace. Peace.